Will you make this quick? I want to go home. I'll make it quick. I'll make it quick. Uh, I just want to go in and say, hey, who was the guy that waved to you in the lobby out there? Oh, that guy. That was Bill Davis. I never did like that guy. Ever since I know him. I haven't seen him since we were kids. Uh, you don't well, like him, huh? No, I don't like well, him. Well, you sure gave him a fast brush. Well, he's <laughs> one of those loud mouths, you know. Always tell him how good he's doing. If he's doing great, he never lets you hit the end of it. And ten to one, if he's doing good, he'd get the news to Alice. Alice? Yeah, when we were kids, the both of us caught at Alice at the same time. Oh, well, come on, will you? It's getting late. I want to get home. All right, all right. I just want to go in and see Slugger Simpson. I mean, after all, he was nice enough to give us the tickets to the fight. How would he feel if I didn't go in there and congratulate him? Congratulate him? How can you congratulate a guy that got knocked out in the first round? <laughs> you wouldn't talk that way if you'd seen him fight three weeks ago down at uh, Ridgewood. He was fighting McHenry. Oh, oh, boy, he was bobbing and weaving there, doing the old ones, too. Uh... I'm telling you, I, he threw so many punches that McHenry thought he was fighting an octopus. Oh, I'm telling you, he was a different man that night. He won, huh? No, but he didn't get knocked out till the second round. <laughs> Can you please go in? I, I'll go in there and say hello to him instead of waiting. I'll be right out. All right, make it as short as the fight. All right. Hey, Ralph! Boy, this is luck. After I lost you in the crowd, I figured I'd never see you again. Hiya, Bill. <laughs> You see, the reason I had to run down here was my friend was anxious to see one of the fighters that was on the card tonight. Well, uh, certainly it's nice seeing you again. Oh, nice to see you, Ralph, after all these years. Tell me, how's Alice? Oh, she's fine, fine. <laughs> you know, in the old days, if anybody would have said that you and I would be shaking hands and talking friendly, we would have thought they were crazy. Yeah, we had a lot of fights. <laughs> we certainly... Well, we're grown up now. Yes, sir, we certainly had some buttes. <laughs> yes, sir, we had some buttes. <laughs> What are you laughing at? <laughs> I was just thinking of the thing I wrote in your autograph book. Boy, you were sore about that. Today, it's something to laugh at. <laughs> what thing in my autograph book? Uh, some kids are small, some kids are tall. Fatso Cramden is the only kid who walks down the hall, wall to wall. <laughs> Waiting? Oh, uh, Norton, this is Bill Davis. This is my friend, Ed Norton. Hey, slip me five so I know you're alive. Yeah. <laughs> glad to know you. Glad to know you. Well, uh, how are you doing? Oh, great. Couldn't be better. You know, I moved to Chicago. Got my own manufacturing business. My headquarters in Chicago. My plants are in Akron. I'm uh, figuring on opening a branch office in New York, so my wife and I took a business trip. Say, how about you, Ralph? Oh, I'm doing great. <laughs> yeah? What's your line? Transportation business. <laughs> Transportation business? Yes, Gotham Bus Company. Uh, what do you do? Oh, I uh, run things. <laughs> hey, that's quite a company. And you run things? Yep. Oh, yeah, he's in a driver's seat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm real glad to hear how well you're doing, Ralph. Yep. I'd sure love to see it for myself. Hey, suppose I come over and you show me around the place tomorrow. Oh, uh, tomorrow? Well, I'm not going to be there tomorrow. I'm very busy doing some outside work. <laughs> well, I don't want to take you away from your work. Yeah. You break for lunch, don't you? How about then? Well, I'm not going to be around for lunch. I have some important meetings around lunchtime. Take uh, up all my well, time. Well, I'm an early riser. I'll be there the first thing in the morning, 8, 8.30. Oh, no, uh, right around that time, I have most of my appointments. Yeah, yeah, he, he, see, he sees loads of people between 8 and 9 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, too bad I'm flying back tomorrow evening, or we could have made it for another day. Oh, you're flying back tomorrow night, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is a shame. I would have liked to take you over and show you my office, take you around the place. <laughs> Gee, swell. Uh, where are you located, Ralph? Oh, down on 9th and 48th Street. Tomorrow I'll stop in for a minute and see your setup. Oh, you can't do that. I won't be there. Oh, don't worry about it. You're the boss. Leave word with your secretary to have one of your employees show me around. I'll be there at 6. Wait a minute. Uh... Wait a minute, don't come at 6 o'clock. Uh, come around 6.30 and I'll come back from whatever I'm doing and I'll show you around personally. Oh, Ralph, I don't want to put you in any trouble. Oh. Uh, <laughs> trouble's his middle name. Yeah. <laughs> it's no trouble at all. Uh, you just be there at 6.30 and I'll take you around. Okay, it's a date. I'll be there at 6.30 at your office. Okay, pal. Nice meeting you, Mr. Norton. Bring and I'm that. sure glad I ran into you, Ralph. Yeah, me too. Go <laughs> <Sure. laughs> <clears throat> Well, uh, General, what is your plan? Don't worry, I got it figured out. That's why I told him 6.30 instead of 6 o'clock. 
At 6 o'clock, Mr. Monahan and all the office help go home. Now, I gotta take a chance and make believe that Mr. Monahan's office is my office. He'll be home. He'll never know the difference. Uh -huh. Well, uh, uh, what happens if uh, uh, Billy Boy asks one of the bus drivers where Mr. Cramden's office is? That will not happen. There's only one way to get into the building. That's the main entrance. You will be down at the main entrance. As soon as he comes in, you bring him right up to my office. I mean, Monahan's office. Uh, and he'll think it's my office. Uh, and incidentally, when you finish work tomorrow, put on a suit. I'll have to oh wear yeah. a suit, too. Yeah, sure. Well, I'll be glad to help out any way I can. But uh, I don't understand. Why, why, why do you have to make out just such a big shot? I had to, Norton. I just had to. You see, when we were kids, both of us were caught in Alice at the same time. Both of us promised her the moon. Well, I don't want him to think that he made it and I didn't. Just for Alice's sake. Oh, I see. You and your pride. You got a nice job. You're happy in your work. And just because he's a rival of yours, you, you got to be, be pretending that you're something you ain't. Boy, I'm telling you, I'd have... I bumped into a, car, a guy a couple of months ago that the, the tricks he was wild about. You know, used to go around together. I didn't put on any airs, you know. When he asked me what I did, I told him I was a sewer worker. <laughs> I didn't make no... Try to make no impression. I didn't care what he thought. What did he do? He was a garbage collector. <laughs> Hello, this is Mr. Monaghan. May I speak to my wife, please? Thank you. Hello, dear. Yes, I find I'm going to be detained at the office for a little while. <laughs> yes, I do realize it's after 6 o'clock. Well, I can't promise you, but I... Well, I expect I'll be leaving here, uh, Oh, between 6.30 and 7. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, dear, but I just couldn't help it. All right, dear, then I'll call you when I'm just about ready to leave. Thank you. Bye-bye. Come on, Norton. Step into my office. <laughs> Well, there it is. Well, so far, your luck is holding out, Ralphie boy. Don't worry, I knew what I was doing. When six o'clock comes, boom, home they go. <laughs> well, when Davis comes up here, he's got to think that I'm the head of the whole bus company. Yeah. Now listen, R.K., now just listen to me for a minute. When I bring him up here, remember, you are the president of the Gotham Bus Company, not a driver. So don't give yourself away by yelling, step to the rear of the office. <laughs> just go downstairs and bring him up as soon as he gets here, and I'll be right behind the desk. All right. Die. <laughs> well, what are you doing here? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, well, what are you doing behind my desk? I'm not, I'm not, wait, wait, wait. Listen, listen, come, come, Crandom, now. What's the explanation for this? Oh, uh, 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 well, you see, I, I come up to talk to you about a little business, and uh, I was looking at your chair, and I thought I'd sit down and see how it feels to be boss. <laughs> well, from now on, let's see if you can possibly avoid uh, playing kowtow to your whimsy. Now. What was it you wanted to see me about? I wanted to see you about. Uh, oh, uh, do you think that you could arrange for a promotion for me to, uh, like, dispatcher or something like that? Cramden, you know you've been around here long enough to know that Mr. Muller has complete say over those promotions. Yes, sir. Now, if there's any other suggestion or anything that I... Yes, Mr. Monaghan. Hello. Oh, yes, Riley. Yes, I'll be right down. Now, be sure you have everything set up. Yes, I can only spare you 10 minutes. All right, right. Well, I'm sorry. Well, if there's nothing else, uh, no, there's Brandon. nothing else. Bye. Good night. Well, uh, Mr. Davis to see you, Mr. Cramlin. Hello, Bill. How are you? <laughs> well, 
This is a very impressive looking place you've got here. Thank you very much. Boy, what an office. Well, I'm glad you had the chance to see it. Now let's get going. Go? <laughs> oh, I just came here. Well, I don't want you to miss your plane. <laughs> oh, if that's what you're worrying about, forget it. I got plenty of time. Eh, let's sit around and talk. Wait a minute. Uh, look, I forgot to tell you this. Uh, after I made the appointment with you, you see, I found out that I had a lot of work to do, and I got to do it right away. Oh, relax, Ralph, will you? You know, I've seen a lot of big executives like you burn yourselves out. Take my advice and slow down. Yeah, I'll, I'll start tomorrow now, can no, we? Oh, nothing doing, nothing doing. You're starting right now. You and I are going to have a nice, leisurely chat about old times. And uh, I guarantee you before long, and say in about a half hour or so, you'll feel like a new man. A half hour? But I haven't got a half hour. I uh, have an appointment with Mr. Monaghan in ten minutes. Sheesh. <laughs> now, if you're all wound up, why don't you call this Monaghan character and cancel your appointment? I can't call. Uh, you see, the phones are all shut off. <laughs> uh, I gotta hand it to you, Ralph. I never dreamed that you'd ever be the head of an operation like this. And you sure did it fast. Yeah, practically overnight. Uh, <laughs> excuse me for interrupting, R.K., but it's uh, 20 minutes to Monaghan. Yes. Ah, 20 minutes to 7. <laughs> yes, it's, I, I'm very sorry, but I, I just have to get to my work now. Well, if you've got to, you've got to. Hey, uh, maybe the next time I come to town, we can get together with the wives. Well, that'd be uh, fine. I'll get in touch with you. Thank you very much. Say, uh, uh, what's the phone number here? Oh, uh, oh, well, don't call me here. Call me at home. Oh, sure, all right. What's your home number? Uh, <laughs> it's an unlisted number. I can never think of that number. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, Bensonhurst 60098. <laughs> can, I, can I always get you there? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Trixie the maid is always there. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Now, will you show Mr. Davis down to the street? Uh, okay, Ralph. Uh, bye. I'll be seeing you and yes, I'll tell you something. The first thing in my Yes, day. thank you. Thank you. Absolutely right. Muller's the man to tell me about the promotion. into town. No, Ralph didn't tell me. Oh, you saw him again this afternoon? No, he's not home yet. Well, this certainly is a surprise. Well, what are you doing in town? When am I going to get a chance to see you and meet your wife? Oh, uh, well, I'm sorry your flight was canceled, but I'm glad it'll give us a chance to get together. <laughs> yeah, you want to come over here to our house? Well, if you'd rather not, sure. Oh, that'd be wonderful. Yeah, I know Ralph would be delighted, sure. Yeah, that'll give us plenty of time. All right, we'll meet you in the colonnade room at 9.30. Oh, I'm really looking forward to seeing you, Bill. All right, bye-bye. Take it away, Trick. Okay. Hi, sweetie. Oh, hiya, Ralph. I just talked to Bill Davis. You talked to who? Bill Davis on the phone. You did? Yeah. How come you didn't tell me you met him at the fights last night? Well, when I got home, you was asleep, and then this morning when I got up, I forgot about it. Uh, he didn't say anything, did he? Well, just that he saw you at the bus company this afternoon. Why? Oh, nothing. Nothing. Gee, he must surely be doing well, Ralph. Well, he says he is, yes. <laughs> he invited us to have dinner with him tonight with his wife. That's impossible. He's flying to Chicago tonight. No, he's not. The airlines just canceled his flight. 
And he's so glad that they canceled it, Ralph, because it'll give us all a chance to get together. Wait till I tell you where we're gonna have dinner. The colonnade room. We are not going. Why not? Because we're not, that's why. You know what kind of a place that colonnade is, don't you? Well, Ralph, I've heard about it for years. It's supposed to be a very fine, exclusive restaurant. Is that so? Well, that shows how much you know about it. Just so happens that it's the most expensive restaurant in the whole world. What do you think it costs to eat there? If it costs a cent, it must cost $3 a person. <laughs> Ralph, Bill invited us. He doesn't expect you to pay for anything. Besides, he was down at the bus company. He knows you're a bus driver. I'm not going. Now, listen, Ralph. Bill was nice enough to invite us, and I accepted his invitation, so we have to go. Besides, we never get a chance to go to a place like that. And we haven't danced together in years. You want to go dancing? Okay, tonight I'll take you to the Hong Kong Gardens. Dance all you want. Oh, Ralph. You can even have those sweet and sour lychee nuts that you like. The whole break. I'll go the whole route tonight. Listen, Ralph, this is a lot of nonsense. You can't give me one good reason why we shouldn't have dinner with Bill and his wife. I can't? I'll give you a reason. The food at the colonnade is no good. That's why. How can you say that? How can I say it? Name me one truck driver who eats there. Oh. Uh, uh. Well, how about a little uh, game of pool tonight, okay? A little game of pool, that is, Norton, if you're not tied I'm up in a board of directors meeting. I'm <laughs> dying trouble, Norton. What? Davis called, called her, she called her up today. Uh-oh, oh, you mean, you mean, you mean she knows about the boss's office? I don't know, but she's sure to find out. He invited us to dinner. He's gonna take his wife, and Alice and me, we're all going to dinner. Uh -huh. It's sure to come up. Now, I gotta have some excuse for not going. Now, come on, give me... Give me some excuse, something to say, anything, wait, anything. Wait, 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 I'm thinking the wheels are turning. Now, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Uh, I got it. Tell me you got a new job, that you're captain of the Ile de France on a ship is sailing in 20 minutes. <laughs> what good is that going to do? Will you ask for anything if that isn't anything? I don't know what it is. Anybody to ask you for an idea must be an idiot. Come on, Norton, give me an idea. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Will you stop getting in such a stew? Don't worry about it. When you're together, don't talk about business. Get off the subject. Talk about something else. Don't talk about business. That's right. He told me I shouldn't talk about business. I should forget business and relax. I'll burn myself out. That's it. Well, every time he starts to talk about business, I'll remind him that we're out on pleasure and I don't want to talk about business. Good. I'm certainly glad I thought of that. All right. Now, listen, let this be a lesson to you. I mean, uh, all the time when you start to show off, it gets bigger and bigger, it grows and grows like a chain reaction. I mean, you got out of it easy this time, but you may not be so lucky next time. I know it, Norton, I know it. Me and my silly pride. I promise you this, Norton. I'm gonna learn. I'm gonna learn from here on in how to swallow my pride. Well, that ought not to be too hard. You've learned how to swallow everything else. <laughs> Dinner. I don't know when I've had a better steak. Would anyone care for any dessert? <laughs> no, thank you. Oh, thanks. Uh, I've, like... been, I've been putting on a little weight lately. <laughs> would you like some coffee or demitasse? Demitasse. Uh, coffee. Demitasse. And you, sir? Uh, I don't want either. I'll have a small cup of black coffee. <laughs> <laughs> funny, funny. <laughs> oh, Bill. I'm so glad you asked us out tonight. It's been such a wonderful evening. Ah, uh, believe me, your old man can stand an evening like this. I got an idea this afternoon of how hard he works. Uh, look, uh, now, please, I asked you not to talk about business. We're all here on pleasure. Let's not mix it up. That's a good rule to stick to. Yep. I'm telling you, Alice, I've seen men who take their responsibilities seriously. Ralph has got them all beat. I know. He certainly does work hard. Mm, I can tell from the few minutes I spent at the bus company. Uh, what do you say? Do we go in and have a little dance in the other room, huh? Will you excuse us? I may never get this chance again. <laughs> 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 You know, it was certainly nice of Ralph to invite us here tonight. Well, uh, I've got something to confess to you, Millie. Uh, I invited them. You invited them? Yeah. But this dinner wants to cost at least $40. We can't afford it. Whatever made you invite them? 
Well, Ralph and I went to school together. And I, uh, uh, I didn't want him to know that I wasn't doing good, so I said I had my own company. Uh, factories in Akron, headquarters in Chicago. Well, anyway, I did it. Well, why couldn't you tell him you're an assistant plumber? Uh, I guess it was my foolish pride. Oh, Bill. Now what are you going to do when the check comes? Look, Ralph is the head of a bus company. This is his town. He's not going to let me pay the check. Well, I don't know. Listen to me, will you, Millie? A big shot like him has probably got a charge account in every one of these restaurants. Oh, I feel terrible about this. Well, look, look, I'll tell you what you do. Now, the only thing to do is, is make a gesture like you want to pay the bill. All right, honey, I will. I'll ask for the check like I want to pay for it. But believe me, after seeing the place he runs, I'm sure money means nothing to Ralph. Now, listen. I don't ever want you to do anything like this again. Yeah, I promise. Do, 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 do. I can do those foxtrots, but when it gets to mamba music or samba music, that's, I'm out. Oh, mamba, samba. Yes. Well, come on. Bill, that's for us. Yeah, oh, excuse us. Oh, waiter, bring me the check. Very good. Aren't they a nice couple, Ralph? Yeah, they certainly are. I gotta admit, success certainly didn't spoil him. No, and you know what's so wonderful? Is that seeing a successful person stay so plain and unaffected? You yeah. know, tonight's gonna cost him a pretty penny, Ralph. Well, what does he care? He's loaded. He don't care. <laughs> You well, know, a guy like him, an executive, they can charge all of this stuff off, you know, on entertainment or something. Yeah. The government allows them that. But, Ralph, the next time they come to town, we've got to have them out to the house. Oh, no. I mean, uh, who knows when he'll come out this way again. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do. Just a sort of a nice gesture. I'll make believe I want to pay the bill. Oh, Ralph. It's nothing. You know, I'll just say, please, let me pay the bill. I'll feel better that way. Oh, no, Ralph. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, it's tough to mama on a full stomach. <laughs> yes, it certainly is. <laughs> you, the know, check, sir? you know, when I first met Bill, he wouldn't sit out one day. Oh, the check, I'll take it. Now, wait a minute, Bill. I insist that I pay the check. Okay, Ralph. <laughs> to make. <laughs> My wife Alice has told me this once, she's told me a thousand times, that I shouldn't try to be somebody I'm not. I can't afford to pay this check. I'm not the boss of the Gotham bus company, I'm just a bus driver. That office I had you in today belongs to Monaghan. He's my boss. Sorry. Just another case of my silly pride. Oh, Ralph, you couldn't have done a thing like that. Well, I, I don't know what to say. Bill, you better say something. Oh, Ralph, I haven't got any company in Chicago. I'm an assistant plumber. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't come here by plane. We came by bus. I can't afford to pay the check either. <laughs>